What's going on, brews? This video right here, right now, that you are watching marks a very pivotal change of this channel. And as a reward for you, the viewer, listening to me rant for the next minute to minute 30 seconds, I'm immediately going to reward you and get right into the next card that I think is going to explode in price. The cards that I tell you, look guys, for your collection goals, for your whatever, you need to buy this card now because it is about to explode. I'm going to get directly into that card as soon as I am done talking and then we'll go from there. But yeah, I just, a lot of people don't care about channel announcements and stuff. So I just want you to know here in a minute, we will get right to the goods. All right. And my track record is flawless this year. So here we go. Here's my quick rant. A year ago, I started YouTubing. All of last year, I was Polka Dan. And I started out doing PSA grading videos, tutorials, and then I got into the Investor Bro stuff, okay? And January 1st happened, I became Mimic Brew. And as Mimic Brew, I started leaning way more into the very critical commentary videos, reaction videos, giving my takes on things, blah, blah, blah. And then also with an emphasis on saving you guys money because I became a master setter. I'm master setting every single set that comes out so all these Pokemon card prices matter a lot to me. They are card prices, they are sets that I'm looking up every single day because all this stuff costs so much damn money. We all know how much Pokemon cards just cost in general. And like, just for example, Palane Fates the Baby Shiny set alone. I remember one time I walked into a card shop, I dropped $240 on Baby Shinies, went back, put them all in the binder, and I looked and it was like I didn't even do anything, like I barely even put a dent into it. You know, so me, Mimic Brew, as your Pokemon TCG guidance counselor, I am truly here to kind of help guide you guys in the right direction, to help you understand that it's about setting goals for yourself, achieving those goals, and not just randomly buying and ripping open every pack, blah, 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 blah. So, card values. When I say this card is about to explode in price, it is not, it is literally just for the reason so you can buy the card for 10 bucks. And then a month later, see it at 20, 25 and be like, yeah, thanks, Mim Crew. Glad I listened to you. It is not for the pumpers, okay? And I will start instilling some fail safes, hopefully in the future, to where we can eradicate pumpers and literally just make this information available for people who truly care about Pokemon cards and just want to save money before they get out of hand. Like the Magic Card. We would all love to have bought Magic Card at $60, not $120. And so my goal here is to help you understand when these cards are probably about to pop off. So if you're interested, get it now. Okay? There. So six months is Pokedan, six months is Mimic Brew. Now, moving forward, I'm going to combine the best of both worlds. Basically, split personality here on this channel. I'm going to lean back heavily into the Investor Bro content. When you spend the last six months making every type of Pokemon TCG content imaginable and the views, the subs, the likes, the comments are just massively, any video where I talk about Pokemon cards, oh, Mimic Brew, you're the best, you're, you know, 100, 150 new subs on my last one where I told you guys about Steelix and then double in price two days later, literally I gained 150 new subscribers just off that one video. That is 10% bump in subs. Okay, if you're good at something, do it. If the people want it, do it. So I'm going to do it for you, the viewer, because that is the, the type of video that you guys like to see out of me. However, Mimic Brew himself will still be appearing, the full Mimic Brew. Anytime I have a critical video to make, drama, an analysis, something other than Pokemon market card prices, you will see the full-blown, the Chad, the Mimic Brew, okay? So, when we're talking Investor Bro, you get this guy. And then when we're talking drama or other stuff, you get the brew. All right, there you go. That's my spiel. Let's get into the goods. Okay, we're, we're getting into the goods now. All right, guys. So, here we go. There it is. Ralts. And I'm going to explain to you why it's Ralts. So, Ralts is the next car that I think is going to explode in price, or at least very much continue to go up in price hopefully not like steelix did where it was like Bew! okay but and here's here's the thought process behind ralts how do i how do i decide when these cards are going to explode okay 
So first of all, you have the chart itself, the one month, the three month, the six month, okay? And then you have what is going on in the market with similar rarity tier cards from that era. So we already have a history in the last few months of illustration rares increasing in value. And we have people in the market that are starting to realize that set size, something I've been saying since I started this channel, makes a huge, huge difference on the rarity per these cards, such as special illustration rares, illustration rares per set. So, and how many hits per rarity tier is a massive factor. Let's talk about Scarlet and Violet base set. How they evolved, 36 illustration rares. Uh, Paradox Rift, 35 illustration rares. So that alone is the foundation for any one or two specific illustration rares to be worth a ton because the difficulty to pull is exceptionally massive. It's a 1 in 12 card, good luck pulling Magikarp, you just won't, okay? So that there's that. And then you have on the other end of the spectrum, Obsidian Flames, tiny set, everything is ridiculously easy to pull. Side note, because of Obsidian Flames, you may have noticed some tweaking in pull rates with Paradox Rift, with Temporal Force, with Twilight Masquerade. That is because the Pokemon company themselves is retroactively evaluating every one of these sets after they release, seeing how the community responds, seeing values. They're over-analyzing this stuff after the fact, which is why you are getting tweaks to pull rates, which is why Twilight Masquerade and Temporal Forces, you are not guaranteed an SIR in a booster box, okay? So you take all this stuff from the charts, to what's going on in the era, what's going on in the community related to similar cards. And then here's another one, playability, the TCG itself, okay? The TCG itself plays a big role. So we have a lot of factors that are affecting this Ralts card, which is why I am confident it is going to be a 20 to $30 card a month from now, okay? So Ralts, $14. Gardevoir, the Gardevoir deck has been doing extremely well recently, so that could be what's helping it, eh, eh, okay? But overall, this is a medium-sized set. Scarlet and Violet is medium with 24 IRs, so there is a reasonable good chance right there that the top IR from this base set could have a nice premium on it just on that alone. On top of that, it's a popular Pokemon. Okay, on top of that, it's a very playable card. Okay, people want to bling their decks out with Ralts, Karelias, and Gardevoirs because it's a good deck. And on top of that, other cards in the same category are already popping off, giving people who want to buy this card more confidence to buy this card as well. So, the premier illustration rare from Scarlet and Violet base set being a 20 or 30 dollar card. That is just totally logical. So, again, get your alts now before it's $20 or $30 a week from now. So there you go. Okay. All right, now from this point forward, it's not all the same. Um, this is going to be me relaying information, and I'll let you decide if you want to buy a lot of these cards at the current price. But this is my like guaranteed lock to get now or you'll regret it. Just like I said, 30 bucks for Groudon. Just like I said, 12 bucks for Steelix. Just like I said, 20 bucks for Raichu, Tyranitar. All these cards have doubled in price since I told you to go out and buy them. All right, here we go. What do I got next? Palais Evolves, or Palais, Palais and Fates. Okay, this was an S tier in my tier list, my set tier list. Um, so a couple things. For only the second time ever, Charizard uh, SIR tapped $100, and it's kind of tapping $100 right now. And the last time it tapped 100, it rejected it and went right back up to 110, 112, 115. So now we are tapping 100 again. So I'm just saying right now, if you are someone who is interested in this card, now would be a good time to start paying attention to this card because if it cracks 99, it could free fall down to 80 quickly. That's a big $100 is a nice round number where if things go above, they usually bounce and if things go below, they usually fall. So right now, if you're interested in this card, I would keep an eye on this card and seeing what it does at the $100 mark. Another one, one that's going up instead of going down, is Gardevoir. So again, there could be some playability attached to this, but at the same time, I don't actually believe that. I think that this card, let's look at the six month. So we started out after release 68, and we keep trying to hit 55 and rejecting 55. Okay, or maybe right here, yeah, 55, 45. Well, right now, it's about to do that again it's f it's woo. there's a one month chart 
see where it is. I wouldn't be surprised if Charizard goes down and Gardevoir goes up and Mew just keeps on going up. I wouldn't be surprised if a few months from now Mew is the most expensive card and not Charizard. Literally, from the set. But Gardevoir is 60, 70 bucks. I could easily see that. Uh, yeah, so anyway, Gardevoir is doing some interesting things to the upward side, whereas Charizard is doing some interesting things to the downward side. All right, now let's get into a baby shiny for the first time in like two months. So over the last two months, Snorlax has just been going from 12 to about $14. And then finally, just in the last couple weeks, it has cracked over 15 And now we are at $17 and listings for $20. So the Snorlax was kind of just out of the top five as far as uh, more, most expensive baby shinies. And now it is very comfortably in, into the top five. And it is worth more than it has ever been worth. Yeah. Started out at 15, fell, and now we're all the way... Look at that beautiful chart. All the way up to 17. All right, let's get into Ghastly. This card has been all over the place. Like, the chart itself doesn't even truly show how ridiculous this card's existence has been in the short amount of time. So right here, uh, you see this, this was actually like $200 for about an afternoon. <laughs> uh, but then immediately, so this was a pump, a pump, a buyout, and then a pew, 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 and then it went all the way as low as $16. But now look at this, just been slowly but surely reclaiming, reclaiming, May 27th, 20, I got June 5th, 20, 21, 22, 25. So this card is climbing its way up to 25, 30 bucks. And Again, this set, it's like not a large set. It, it's definitely a medium set. Temporal Force is almost the exact same size, I believe, as Scarlet and Violet base set, but it has tweaked altered pull rates where you get way more EXs and way more crap for your hits instead of the good stuff. And the SIRs are harder, and it just certainly seems like the illustration rares are a little harder as well. Okay, so Ghastly is starting to naturally and healthily climb up, not skyrocket to the moon up. Okay, so this next card before I show you, this card, I genuinely don't know if it's playability related, and I don't care, because the entire time this next card has existed, I was like, this is the most beautiful $10 card of all time. It is such a beautiful card, and it's from one of my favorite Scarlet and Violet sets by far. It's Tapu Koko from Paradox Rift. This card is finally, finally going up. So, look at this. So March, let's go to three month. So for the last, you know, foreseeable past, it's been a $10 to $12 card. And then just now, at the beginning of this month, we have this. And this is why I was wondering if it's playability, play, 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 blah, playability related or not. Either way, this card is finally getting up to, I think, the value it should be at. Because when you see the texture on this card, when you actually just look at this card in person, it is just cool. It's just a very cool, unique looking card. There's not a lot of Pokemon cards that look like this. And yeah, it just kind of goes hard and it fits right into the chaotic beauty that is Paradox Rift. Like, this card is... Oh my god, I'm so glad I bought this card for 10 bucks. And now it's, you know, 18 bucks. So there you go. Now, is this a card that's gonna, you know, buy it now before it explodes? No, I think this is a 20 to $25 card on its best day. I'm just saying, maybe, maybe you should get it now before it does become a $25 card. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let's get to, we got a little bit of everything from Scarlet and Violet here, almost every set we're talking about. So Paldea Evolved, Skeledurge, this was on my top 10 favorite SIR video. So same thing, this card has just been nicely edging its way on up. Let's look at the one year. So even on, it's, it's almost up to its, it's well yeah, because May of last year is when Paldea came out. So this is essentially its whole career here. Uh, 15 bucks, yeah, sounds about right. It's marching its way up to its all-time high. And this is a very beautiful, pastel, di diversely pastel, what am I trying to say? There's a lot of light pastel colors all beautifully meshed together in this in this beautiful little card here. And, and then also, the texture goes hard. The texture goes hard with it, for sure. So anyway, it's finally doing things. First time in a while, Skeledurge, Skeledurge. Was it 15 bucks? Yeah, 15 bucks. Good for you, Skeleters. All right, now let's look at a uh, 151 illustration rare, and it's not one of the big three that no one's talking about, but it's also finally making its way up little by little, and it's also a beautiful artwork. Poliwhirl. So everybody loves this Poliwhirl, but it's kind of one of the not as talked about illustration rares from the set. But guess what? It's finally doing some things too. So 
Poly World, what was it, about a $10, $11 card, it looks like. But over the last month, it has just started to, it hit 13 bucks. I guess we'll see what it does here. The point is, for the last three weeks or so, it started to move upwards. So I don't know. This isn't a big one. This isn't a crazy one. I'm just letting it be known that Polyworld might find its way uh, alongside Dragonite and be like a $15, you know, the next tier down. You know, even the Pikachu is 17, 18 bucks. So if Polyworld can make it up to 14 or 15, it almost be worth as much as the Pikachu. Just saying. A lot of people like that artwork. Imagine this card. What would this card look like if it had texture on it? Huh. That would be be like the Blastoise almost, where it's all water. Anyway, all right. Uh, so Crown Zenith. I want to talk about touch on Crown Zenith because we've had a big pop across the board on everything. Then we've had a little bit of a regression on almost everything. For example, like the RCS went all the way up to 100. Now it's at 83. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So yeah, like right there. So yeah, literally tapped 100, rejected, and went down. When it comes to stocks and crap like this, round numbers, they just they just do that. <clears throat> so 100, rejected, went down. So there's three cards that they're, they're a cool-off, almost no cool-off, and that's why I want to talk about them. Because all, all the Crown Zenith went up, and now it's going down just a little, regressing, but there are three cards that I think have held their value well. And they are the three legendary beasts. And no, they are not legendary dogs. If anything, they are actually cats. Okay, so Suicune, not Suicune. I'm still going to say Suicune because it's funner to say. Suicune, Anti, and Raikou. Not Raikou. Raikou. It just sounds weird. Uh, Raikou. So uh, Suicune, Anti, and Ra uh, Raikou. These three, look at them real quick. Their pop and slight flop. It wasn't so bad. Look at that. So there's your pop to 30, and then look at your flop, down three bucks. The Suicune, a lot of people, this is their favorite Crown Zenith card, a lot of people. And can you blame them? I mean, holy crap. So this legendary beast, as far as the cool off, Crown Zenith cool off, really hasn't. It's held very well. I think if anything, it was, same with Enti, and it was Raikou that if anything did cool off a little, but let's check it out. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Enti. That's not a cool off at all. Yeah, Enti. Yeah, Enti's not cooling off giving 20% back. Holy shit. So yeah, Enti. Looking real good. Alright. <laughs> Alright, now, and I think it was right Raikou that actually did have a little bit of a cool off. Dubba -dubba -dubba. Yeah, just a little bit. Not even that bad. Let's see here. So we hit 25. Now, I bet you it rejects 20 and goes right back up to 25. So yeah, the three of these, these are always probably all three of these are gonna track together with each other because they're all so equally, I mean, Suicune's definitely the best. But I mean, shit. I mean, see, that's the thing. You look at all three of them, they're all equally cool in their own way. And they're, the le they're a trio. So would it be surprised if all three of these hold very strong upper value in Crown Zenith? The Leafeon and the Glaceon, they're evolution, so they're probably always going to be hot and cold, but, I mean, they'll probably still rest somewhere above the three legendary beasts. And then these four, it's a weird thing, Crown Zenith, because these pull rates are still great. It's not like the pull rates all of a sudden got crazy difficult and then the cards went up. The pull rates are still, this is the most rewarding, best bang for your buck set you can open currently in the Pokemon TCG market, I guarantee you. Like, like when this set came out, you could easily rip it open, sell all your hits and make money. And we are almost getting to that point now, given the fact that the sealed products are still super cheap. All right, two more. What do I got here? Oh, just in general, I want you guys to just keep your, not Evolving Skies specifically, but rain, Rainbow Secret Rares. Cool off on the alt arts. Whereas these guys, Rainbow Secret Rares across the board, whether it doesn't matter, we're talking about Lost Origin, Brilliant Stars, Chilling Rain, this, any one of them. All these Rainbow Secret Rares are freaking rare, okay? They are actually hard, they are, they don't, I go to card shops, I go to card shows, I go to more card shops every freaking day than anybody I know. For every 10 Moonbryons in a card shop that I find, I find one secret rare Umbreon VMAX. I am not kidding. 
if you really want to know if a card is rare or not, you spend all day, every day, going to card shops, looking through binders and looking through glass cases, and you will start to realize there are certain cards that are just strictly far more rare than other cards. And these Rainbow Secret Rares, especially the ones that people want to keep once they pull, because they are so hard to pull, are absolutely going to increase in value. Hold this value, 100% thousand percent what was the oh and here's another one lost origin the lost origin uh giratina is one of the best and it's still only 20 bucks okay so i just want to show you guys this where you at i should probably pick cards real quick so this card has been 20 dollars forever and it still is and it blows my mind where are you at there it is so this card is one of the coolest Rainbow Secret Rares. It's a Pokemon that's gaining in popularity, who has similar cards that are worth a lot, lot, lot more, like the Crown Zenith one. The gold is obviously massive. This card is an exceptionally rare card, and the fact that it's still only $20 blows my freaking mind. So it's cards like this I think you should keep your eye out on and consider collecting Rainbow Secret Rares from Sword and Shield. And last time, one for the waifu and furry boys, I just want to remind you guys that a year ago, Marnie, full art trainer, the chase from Sword and Shield base, was worth twice as much as it is now, and I think you're running out of time to get it at a discount. So a year ago, this card was $80. <clears throat> right here and now, it is $40. This is a card, and let's see, it got as low as $35. So a card that historically has been $80 plus, you can get it right now, maybe for 35 to 40 bucks. And look at that chart. I don't gotta tell you that you are running out of time. Okay, guys? So for the waifu and furry boys, here's your chance to get Marnie at a big discount. There you go. All right. So that was the the list. And guys. Alright. So again, split personalities here at Mimic Brew. You get the investor brew. And then you're going to get the Mimic Brew. Anytime I'm talking about card prices and saving money, I'm just going to look like this. And, you know, not a ton of editing, not a ton of crazy whatever. Uh, but when we do the Mimic Brew stuff, when I have something entertaining to talk about, drama, controversy, you will get the whole, the whole thing. Okay, guys? Anyway, first time ever, I'm going to uh, uh, advertise that I have a channel membership. It's $1.99 a month. Why am I doing that? Because TCA Gaming, he's a channel member of mine. And I just recently gained another channel member. Uh, so yeah, uh, for because those people are paying me a dollar ninety nine, um, I think you know out of respect for them, I am going to start making uh, member only videos. And those member only videos will be the type of videos where I talk about prices before they go up. And I would like to make these type of videos member only, like the ones where I'm really like telling you, hey, this card's about to explode. I'd like to do that to a smaller audience to weed out any potential pumpers or people who are just going to go to TCG Player and buy out any card that I mention. Because, um, you know, we don't want to make self-fulfilling prophecies <clears throat> where I tell you to buy a card and then because I tell you to buy a card and it's exploding, I would way rather you just very sneakily get that card for yourself before it explodes. Anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys on the next one. Deuces!